Hello Magic players, this is Jumbo Commander and I have a new video for you today and it's titled So You Want to Play with Protean Hulk. That's right, Protean Hulk has been recently unbanned and I have a video about how you can use it. Or an alternate title for this video could be So You Want to Counter Your Friends Protean Hulk. No matter how you feel about Protean Hulk, it is a very powerful card and you need to know how to use it and how it operates so that you can disrupt it when it eventually runs across your path. So let's take a quick read at this very powerful magic card. Protean Hulk is five green green for a six six beast and when Protean Hulk is put into a graveyard from play, search your library for any number of creature cards with total converted mana cost six or less and put them into play. That's right, directly into play. People have been talking about how Protean Hulk is a pretty broken card. There's a lot of ways to combo off with it, and I'm going to show you many of them. A lot of people compare it to a card like Tooth and Nail, where all you need is one card and suddenly, boom, you win the game. And you can certainly build your deck like that. Now, I personally think Protean Hulk is a very fun card. Being able to tutor up some great creatures, value creatures, putting them into play, but there's a lot of combo potential. So let's learn about what it takes to combo out with Protean Hulk. The first thing you need is a sacrifice outlet, and that's because you need to get Protean Hulk into your graveyard. There's some really efficient sacrifice outlets that are not creatures. That means they can't be fetched by Protean Hulk. And so they have to be on the battlefield before you start comboing off but a card like Goblin Bombardment and Altar of Dementia are really great because if you set up a loop of bringing back creatures, sacrificing creatures, bringing back creatures, Goblin Bombardment will slowly bombard your opponents to death one damage at a time, and Altar of Dementia will eventually mill your opponents out. If we use cards like Ashnod's Altar or Phyrexian Altar, we can amass infinite amounts of mana, which is pretty easy to win the game from. But the thing we really want to look at are creature sack outlets because they can be fetched by Protean Hulk. A few notable ones in black are Yeheni, Undying Partisan, Demir Houseguard, and Sadistic Hypnotist. All of these have great additional effects, but they're a little bit too expensive. Protean Hulk only fetches back six total CMC and paying three, four, or even five to get a sacrifice outlet, even though the sacrifice outlet is free, uh, isn't good enough. So that's why the all-stars of this combo are going to be Viscera Seer and Carrion Feeder, because they only cost one mana to fetch up with Protean Hulk, and they're a free sacrifice outlet. These cards are invaluable for this combo. But there are a few others that we can use to go off with. One of the classic examples is Flash. Let's take a closer look, because Flash Hulk has been kicked around as a very interesting deck idea. Flash reads, one in a blue instant with super creepy art. Choose a creature card from your hand and put that creature into play as though it were just played. Pay the creature's casting cost, reduced by two if you cannot bury the creature. And Protean Hulk wants that to happen. They want you to be able to put a Protean Hulk straight onto the battlefield, then immediately into the graveyard, kind of evoking it for two mana. I mean, it's just great. Flash requires you to have Flash and Hulk in your hand at the same time. Mm. In a 100 card singleton format, that's pretty difficult. That's why people focus on the Flash Hulk combo when you can have four of each. So Flash is less useful, but some people are gonna try and play it, which makes it kind of fun. Sadisi's Faithful is a one mana, one time sacrifice outlet. It does let you bounce something, which can be pretty useful. That means you can bounce Sadisi's Faithful itself back to your hand and then get a second exploit trigger out of it. Next, we have Phyrexian Dreadnought, which costs only one mana and is kind of a one-time sacrifice outlet that's colorless, very valuable. We don't care if we have to sacrifice up to 12 and then have the Phyrexian Dreadnought die. We just want something to let us sacrifice. All of this sacrifice doesn't matter unless we have the second stage of this combo, and that's usually recursion. We usually can't get the combo going with one Protean Hulk activation, so we need to get that Hulk back and sacrifice it again to get even more cards. 
So a card like Phyrexian Delver, allowing you to bring the Hulk back into play, only to sacrifice it again and get more cards is really valuable. If you want to branch out into different colors, Karmic Guide is a very popular card. It also works extremely well with its best friend Revelark because its power is two. Very nice. There are a few blue cards that interact really well with Protean Hulk. One of my favorites is Volrath Shapeshifter. This only costs three CMC, which is pretty valuable when we're capped at getting six CMC onto the battlefield. As long as the top card of your graveyard is a creature card, Vrath's Shapeshifter is a copy of that card, and it has the wonderful ability of two discard a card. Volrath's Shapeshifter, if it's brought into play by Protean Hulk, basically is Protean Hulk, because Protean Hulk is going to be the top card of your graveyard. You have to be a little bit careful about what you sacrifice next from there, but it's a pretty powerful ability to get another Protean Hulk for just three CMC. And another creature that can become Protean Hulk is Body Double. Protean Hulk will be in your graveyard, so Body Double can become a copy of it and then lets you sacrifice your new Protean Hulk to get more things straight onto the battlefield. There's another piece of recursion that can't immediately become Protean Hulk, but is a really big combo piece with a lot of these other cards, so you should not forget Safi Eric's daughter. Safi can be a part of your recursion engine later on when we have a lot of creatures in the mix, but she can't really start off the recursion combo like the Phyrexian Delver or the Revelark. Here's a small category called protection. Sometimes we have a few extra CMC while fetching creatures out of our library. So what we can do is we can fill up this one or two mana slots with Grand Abolisher and Sylvan Safekeeper. This allows us to protect our combo. So if you ever see these guys thrown into a Protean Hulk sort of package, they're basically around to sort of be one level more of protection. They're not really a part of the combo. Let's move on to the combo kill. What series of cards are we going to put together to just end up winning? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through step by step what we would do during a combo kill. The first thing we need is a Protean Hulk. Okay, we have a Protean Hulk on the battlefield. Now, if we have a sacrifice outlet, this gets much easier. But let's pretend that we don't have a sacrifice outlet and Protean Hulk just ends up dying in combat or dying because of a board wipe or something like that. The first thing that we need to do is go search up six CMC and put it onto the battlefield. My first suggestion is a Phyrexian Delver to get Protean Hulk back and a Viscera Seer. See those CMCs adding up to six? And that Viscera Seer will let us sacrifice our new copy of Protean Hulk to do this again. Now, one thing you might notice is that there have been a lot of different cards in the recursion category that we could use. We could fetch up Body Double and Viscera Seer. We can fetch up Karmic Guide and Viscera Seer. Uh, there are a few different cards that we can play around with to make sure we have the right combo. Let's say we have a Sacrifice Outlet already on the battlefield. We could go get a Sylvan Safekeeper to keep things safe. But then we still haven't won. We just have a Sacrifice Outlet and a second Protean Hulk on the battlefield. That's where we can go and get an easy two card win with Machaeus the Unhallowed and Walking Ballista. See, Machaeus the Unhallowed has six CMC, so you think you're done fetching cards out of your library, but you're not. Walking Ballista has a converted mana cost of zero, allowing you to put it straight onto the battlefield. This combo could be a little bit weird. Machaeus gives all of your creatures, non-human creatures that is, plus one, plus one, and undying. So Walking Ballista is not a zero, zero, it's a one, one. And then once you sacrifice it to Viscera Seer, it will die, come back with a plus one, plus one counter on it because it has undying, and allow you to remove that hanging one thing, sacrificing it again, and repeating this loop one damage at a time until all your opponents are dead. Now this is just one infinite combo, and this is an easy one to get as long as you have a sacrifice outlet. And one thing that could be really good you might notice is that if you had a sacrifice outlet on the battlefield, let's say a Viscera Seer is already on the battlefield, you play Protean Hulk, you sack it to the Viscera Seer, you don't even need a Phyrexian Delver or a Body Double or Karmic Guide. You can go straight for the Mokeas and Walking Ballista finish. But that's just one combination. There are many more in many different colors. 
Let's take a look at Revelark, because Revelark allows us to do a crazy loop of bringing things back from our graveyard. Revelark has a great leaves the battlefield trigger. Whenever it goes anywhere, whether it goes into exile, whether it goes into the graveyard, you get to fetch up two target creature cards with power two or less from the graveyard straight to the battlefield. So when Revelark dies, we can bring back, say, a Karmic Guide and a Body Double, getting two Protean Hulks. This is where the combo potential goes out of control. You can get basically any creature from your library straight onto the battlefield, any creature in your graveyard straight onto the battlefield. You can just start fetching up everything and just circle creatures over and over and over again. I mean, it's hard not to combo out when you have the Revelark Karmic Guide combo going. When we get this cycle going, a card that could close out the game could be a Blood Artist. Maybe we get a Trinket Mage, and then that gets an Altar of the Brood, and then we mill our opponents out. There's a ton of stuff we can get. But that's just kind of how we end up finishing the game. Creating this loop is the really important part. But let's get deeper into Protean Hulk and find out another way we can win. So this next combo requires either a Sacrifice Outlet or a single blue mana. But let's just imagine your Protean Hulk on the way to the graveyard, allowing you to search out six CMC of value and put it straight onto the battlefield. You will get a Body Double for five CMC and a Sadisi's Faithful for one. The Body Double will come into play as a Protean Hulk. Sadisi's Faithful will have an exploit trigger, allowing you to exploit that new Protean Hulk and bounce Sadisi's Faithful back to your hand. So you have another Protean Hulk trigger and a Sadisi's Faithful in your hand. Then you play a Vorath's Shape Shifter and a Laboratory Maniac straight from your library onto the battlefield. Now Vorath's Shape Shifter will become a Body Double and Body Double can then become a Protean Hulk. So you now have a Protean Hulk on the battlefield and a Laboratory Maniac and a Sadisi's Faithful in your hand. You can pay one blue mana to cast Sadisi's Faithful. That will allow you to sacrifice the Varath's Shapeshifter that's masquerading as a body double that's masquerading as a Protean Hulk. <laughs> then that'll let you get six more CMC from your library straight onto the battlefield and you shall get Hapless Researcher. Oh, it's a little researcher. And Leveler. Leveler says when it comes into play, remove your library from the game. Oops, you no longer have a library. Hapless Researcher says sacrifice it to draw a card, then discard a card from your hand. As soon as you sacrifice Hapless Researcher, your laboratory maniac goes, aha, you tried to draw a card and could not. You win the game. This becomes a little bit easier if you have a sacrifice outlet. You don't need to mess around with Sadisi's Faithful. You can just kind of go for a shapeshifter lab maniac combo. But sometimes you need a sack outlet, and Sadisi's Faithful is definitely not as good as Viscerous here as we can see here. Let's move on to another combo. I like this combo a lot. Your Protean Hulk is on its way to the graveyard. You're going to fetch out six CMC of value. You shall get Nomad's Encore, Cephalid Illusionist, Grand Abolisher, and a Hapless Researcher and a Dryad Arbor. Why not just throw a Dryad Arbor in there? That's cool, you know, an Ornithopter, why not? Just keep throwing zero CMC and creatures in there. Okay, so the Nomads in core are going to pay zero to redirect one damage from the Encore to a creature you control, which is going to be the Cephalid Illusionist. When it becomes target of this ability, you're going to mill three cards. Okay, then you're just gonna keep doing this over and over and over and over and over again until you have no cards left in your library. Basically, all of those cards are in your graveyard. And what happened to be turned over into your graveyard but a Dread Return and your Laboratory Maniac? You will cast Dread Return, returning the Lab Maniac to the battlefield, and then use that lovely hapless researcher to draw your last non-existent card and win the game. What a wonderful little combo. Let's keep going. One of the great things about the Protean Hulk combo is that you can get almost any combo you want and kind of work it in to Protean Hulk. Uh, there are a lot of people out there finding Kiki Jiki and conscripts and putting them together into a Protean Hulk combo. Uh, I personally like this one, Pilipala and Grand Architect. 
Oh, it's a great infinite mana combo. Basically, Grand Architect can turn Pilly Paula blue and then tap it for two mana, and then you can pay two mana and untap Pilly Paula to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. And then you just keep doing that over and over and over again. Generate two, spend two to untap it, and generate one mana of any color. Getting you infinite mana, and how are you going to use that infinite mana? Well, you've only fetched up five CMC with Pilly Paula and Grand Architect. Let's spend that last CMC on a Root Water Diver. What? This one mana merfolk says tap, sacrifice it to return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Hmm. Well, because we're missing one other piece. Walking Ballista. You can fetch it up because it's zero CMC and then it will instantly die going to your graveyard and then Rootwater Diver can get it back once it doesn't have summoning sickness. And then you can cast your, your Walking Ballista with all of that infinite mana you just created. A nice little combo for killing people. The next combo revolves around Academy Rector, which is a degenerate card in its own right. Academy Rector, when it dies, can get any enchantment and put it straight on the battlefield. A very powerful enchantment is Pattern of Rebirth. When Pattern of Rebirth's creature dies, you get any creature and put it into play. Uh, this synergizes quite well with Boon Weaver Giant, which can fetch the Pattern of Rebirth back from the graveyard onto the battlefield. And then you throw in a card like Revelark, which can get the Boon Weaver Giant back, something that can sacrifice the Boon Weaver Giant, get the Pattern of Rebirth and trigger it over and over again. You end up with crazy cycles like the ones we've mentioned before. And it's a pretty easy to search up Boon Weaver combo and just kind of throw a Protein Hulk in there and it'll make the deck that much more resilient. Let's move on to another favorite of mine because it deals with elves. Wirewood Symbiote, Priest of Titania, and Mirror Entity creates an amazing interaction. So Priest of Titania, right now on the battlefield, can tap for two, but all you have to do is activate Mirror Entity once, and suddenly Wirewood Symbiote becomes an elf as well. That means Priest of Titania can tap for three mana, and you can return Wirewood Symbiote itself to your hand, and then untap Priest of Titania, playing Wirewood Symbiote again. This will net you positive mana, and one great thing to do with positive mana is spend it on a card like Mirror Entity. There are so many combos that can be put together with Protean Hulk. How are you expected to fight against them all? Well, there are a few cards that can really interact positively with Protean Hulk. The first thing you can do is counter the Hulk, never let it get onto the battlefield. You might find the deck to be a little bit more resilient than you'd expect, maybe with a commander like Marin or Carador, allowing you to take the Protean Hulk from the graveyard and use it again, or maybe just something simple like an Eternal Witness getting that Protean Hulk back. So you might have to fight through with more than one counterspell, or more than one counter the triggered ability. They can sacrifice Protean Hulk, sending it to your graveyard, and you can disallow that trigger, and then they don't get to search for anything. Or, how about a Hate Bear? Imagine if they're searching and you even mind censor them, and suddenly they can't get the cards they need. Or you Containment Priest them so that they can't put any cards onto the battlefield. Instead, they're exiled. Speaking of exile, why don't we just exile the Protean Hulk so it never actually hits the graveyard? Swords to Plowshares can target that guy super quick. Unfortunately, sometimes he just gets sacrificed anyway, so why not never let any creature card hit the graveyard with a card like Kalidus Traitor of Get? There are a lot of cards that fit each of these categories. You don't have to run Disallow, you can run Void Slime. You don't have to run Swords to Plowshares, you could run Path to Exile. Uh, Kalidus Trader of Get could easily be a Nile Spell Bomb or Leyline of the Void. But anyways, there's a lot of different ways you can interact with the graveyard, and this might be a good thing for your deck. You might find out that you run a card specifically because there's a Hulk combo in your meta, and then you find out that it works really well against a lot of crazy broken synergies. So. Please throw some of these cards in and you might find out that they're much more useful than you think. I want to thank you all for watching my spotlight on Protean Hulk and if you like this video and want to see some cool deck techs, why don't you check out some of the other stuff that I've made. And if you really like me, you can go ahead and subscribe and see my videos every week. They come out on Wednesdays. If you want to chat, you can leave a comment or you can reach me at jumbocommander at gmail.com and I have a Twitter. 
I, I don't know if I have a Twitter yet. I might have a Twitter. Uh, okay, until next Wednesday. Bye.